Spring walleye fishing is finally here. One of my favorite times to catch walleyes because they're up shallow, they're hungry, uh, they're in predictable locations. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you my top five spring walleye presentations that you have to have tied on, ready to go if you wanna catch walleyes this time of year. So without wasting your time with a big long intro, let's get right into the baits. All right, presentation number one. Let's get the obvious one out of the way and that is just your classic jig and a minnow. There's a bunch of different shapes, a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of different brands, a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different hook sizes you can go for, um, but this time of year, the jig and the minnow is just your classic presentation, and it absolutely works extremely well. There's a reason why 99.9% .9 of spring walleye fishermen will have one tied on. They just straight up catch fish, and the other reason why it's so good is the fact that it's super versatile. Um, so some of the presentations that I'll be talking about soon are gonna work for you know certain ways of fishing. You know whether it's fishing fast, fishing slow, fishing really close to the bottom, finesse, you know ripping. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that we'll do this time of year, and the jig and the minnow can do just about all of them. Um, one of the biggest debates is going to be long shank versus short shank and that is something that you're going to have to play with and figure out for yourself because I know a lot of really good anglers who have different preferences. I have always preferred long shanks just for the fact that you have the hook a little bit further back in the minnow. So let's say I thread this on here. The hook is going to be further back. That's going to increase your hooking percentage. Um, but that being said, that short shank presentation is a little bit more of a compact presentation that can get more bites sometimes. So just something to think about. Um, a jig that I've been playing with and is honestly my new favorite walleye jig, just overall for all different types of things, um, is Northland's new tungsten jig. And the reason why, and you guys have probably heard it, a ton over and over, um, especially in the bass fishing world and also in the ice fishing world um, about tungsten is tungsten is very dense so you get a lot smaller of a presentation. Um, so like an eighth ounce tungsten jig is gonna be a lot smaller than an eighth ounce lead jig. So there's just a lot of benefits to it. There's also added feel so when you're pulling it across the bottom you can feel the sand, you can feel the rocks, you can feel those transition areas. Um, that's why I love tungsten. This jig also has a really good hook, it has a good keeper for when you're using minnows specifically. So there's a lot to like about this one, um, but there's a bunch of different brands, a bunch of different styles of jigs out there. Whatever your favorite jig, get one tied on. Uh, make sure you has, have some eighth ounce sizes this year, quarter ounces if you're fishing a little bit deeper or maybe using a bulkier bait or something like that. Um, 3 16th can be good as well, um, but my go-to weight is eighth. This one's gold, but gold, black, silver, um, pink, green, blue, there's a lot of different colors that you could choose from this time of year, and that's just gonna be based on the day, it's gonna be based on the lake that you're fishing, the river that you're fishing. So first things first, we got the jig and the minnow. I got this specifically right here on a 7.6 rod, which is a pretty big rod. Um, but I would recommend anywhere from seven foot to seven six. Medium light is always the power that I'm using. And then fast action, extra fast action, a lot of different options. Uh, like I said before, this one specifically is the tuned up Apex Pro in medium light, extra fast. So that is my go-to. And the Jig and the Minnow is number one, your most popular classic spring walleye presentation. Now we've got presentation number two for spring walleyes, and where the jig and the minnow is extremely versatile, a lot of things you can do with it. The rattle bait, on the other hand, is very not versatile. But this time of year, sometimes it can be absolutely dominant. You know, you don't have to be, you know, up in Canada or over on Green Bay or the Great Lakes to catch fish on rattle baits. You can catch them all over the place, and in my opinion, spring is really the best time to do it. Um, just make a big long cast out there, and you don't have to like totally rip the bait. You just kind of have to pull it, pull it just enough that it kind of shoots up off the ground, just enough to get that bait to vibrate 
and land. For me, I like to use baits that are right around two inches long, usually not like the biggest size for any particular brand. Something that's not gonna be too big and you don't wanna fish them too aggressively this time of year. Number three on the list of springtime walleye presentations is the jig and a plastic. So we talked a little bit about the jig and the minnow earlier and the reason why the jig and the plastic is on this list is because you can fish it a lot more aggressively than you can a jig and a minnow. So if you get too wild and you're ripping too hard, uh, that minnow can rip off, it can rip halfway off and be all cockeyed on there and you won't get any bites. But the plastic, if you have a good keeper on your jig, stays on there nice and snug. And a presentation that I really like this time of year is a jig and a plastic with hair on there. So basically like a normal hair jig with plastic. And the reason why I like that is because it can have a really slow drop speed. Um, so I've done some tank experiments and like a jig and a minnow falls pretty quickly. Um, so that's why actually when I'm fishing a jig and a minnow, I really like to stay extra light because I feel like I can keep good bottom contact with a really light jig. That being said, you take a hair jig and then you put a plastic on it. It kind of bulks up that presentation a little bit. And with the tank testing that I've done, this bait falls really slow and it's very, very tantalizing. So this is a really cool uh, presentation that I like to do. Um, I'll also run just like a jig and a minnow style plastic and kind of hop it across the bottom. Uh, paddle tails can be really popular this time of year, especially if you're river fishing. And the hard part about doing a video like this is I don't necessarily know what kind of fishery you're fishing. Um, if you're fishing somewhere where the water color is a little bit darker, a little bit dingier, um, a jig and a paddle tail might be like the absolute best presentation that you have in spring to catch walleyes. So it all just kind of depends on where you're fishing. You know, if you're fishing in the rivers when the walleyes are running up into the river, jigging a paddle tail is absolutely dominant. This is a cool presentation and when you're fishing, a jig and a plastic, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider um, as far as presentation goes, but usually what I'm doing is I'm just popping it off the bottom, pop, pop, You'll have to get used to how slowly it falls, but basically you want this jig to hit the bottom, sit there for a second, and then pop it up. It's very important that you let it sit there for a second because sometimes the fish will come and pin it down against the bottom, and that's where you'll get a lot of your bites. So make sure you're still fishing close to the bottom, even if you're using like a swimming bait like a paddle tail or anything like that. That's another go-to presentation that I personally always have tied up, always have in the boat ready to go, during the springtime period. Presentation number four is the rusty trusty bobber rod. So you can see I got the bobber right here. Got a jig down at the bottom. And for some reason, people don't use bobbers in spring as much as they should. It seems like everybody wants to talk about summer fishing with bobbers for walleyes, just cause it's like a really good finesse presentation. They like to talk about power corking. And uh, the reason why I think bobbers are really awesome this time of year, you know, like when we go out fishing in summer, those walleyes might, might be down in the bottom in 30 feet of water. They might be 20 feet of water up on top of some break. They might be 15 feet down suspended over, you know, 25 feet. So basically like the walleyes can be just about anywhere. So you're constantly adjusting that bobber stop, trying to get the bait just in that perfect zone so that the fish will come up, slowly look at it and take a bite. Uh, but in spring, it just seems like you can leave that bobber stop in one spot and you can fan cast around. If you have side imaging, you can line up shots like that. If you have any kind of live sonar like live scope, you can point that fish, drop a bobber right on top of their head and you know, get bit more often than not. For me, bobber fishing can be really powerful this time of year. It just seems like it's a really good tantalizing way to put baits in front of fish and hang them in the zone for a long period of time. Uh, right now I've got a jig rigged up on here. This is just an eighth ounce short shank tungsten jig in black specifically. And I love using black when I'm fishing leeches especially. So just everything is black. It's a nice cool uh, finesse presentation. And jigs are nice because, you know, it just puts the bait right down to the fish right away. You don't have to wait for, you know, the weight to come 
down and then the hook to kind of pendulum down to the fish. That being said, you know, if the fish are in a really tough mood, sometimes just the plain hook can be really effective with a weight, you know, kind of clipped on about a foot or two feet above it. So this is a really surprisingly efficient tactic for catching fish and it's just a really good tactic, especially if you see like a pot of fish out on side imaging, to just toss in the middle. And I've had days where I've gone out and me and buddies have been fishing and I've had this thing tied on and I've been slinging it around and it just seems like some days you'll outfish your buddies who are fishing a jig and a minnow or a jig and a plastic, you know, three to one, four to one. Uh, it just seems like some days they want the bobber set up. Once again, I have this rigged up on the Apex Pro, medium light, fast action. But for me, most importantly, is the fact that it's an eight foot long rod. You can definitely get away with shorter rods. Don't feel like you have to have a big giant rod. Um, but this for me is the ideal setup. Don't forget your bobber rod at home this year. It can be absolutely deadly and get you bites sometimes when jigs won't. So last up, presentation number five is crankbaits. And there's a bunch of different theories behind crankbaits. You can cast them, you can troll them. I would really love trolling them this time of year. If you're going through an area and you see a ton of fish and you just can't get them to bite, you beat them up with jigs, you've tried to get reaction strikes with a lipless crankbait, uh, sometimes just pulling crankbaits through those areas can be a good enough presentation where you're putting the bait in front of enough fish and you might just get one to turn around and snap on it. Sometimes that can really be key and I know for me and for a lot of guys that I know um, that are really good anglers, they can't get them casting, they'll just throw cranks back there and you just never know. It's a totally different look and sometimes that can be the ticket. You'll notice I don't have this on a line counter reel. This is just a simple spinning reel setup um, and the reason why I like to have it set up like this more often than not in spring is that I'm not necessarily like doing precision contour trolling where I'm trying to get the bait down to an exact depth, maybe down on a break line. I'm usually fishing up in shallow flat areas. Basically what I'll do is I'll just take this spinning rod um, and this bait and just cast it a full cast length behind the boat and basically just play it by feel. So if you have a crank that bait that you know is gonna dive anywhere from like five to eight feet of water and you're fishing in like six or seven, you kind of just feel it out. You can go with like smaller shad style presentations like this one. Uh, stick baits can be really good as well. Um, or you could throw a jerk bait back there. A lot of different things to play with, um, but that is my final presentation, a crankbait. Also, I should say as well too, like another reason why I like to have them on the spinning rod like this is, you know, I could cast it back and troll it, or I could take it and cast it out at, you know, a pot of fish and potentially catch them. So um, the spinning rod is super versatile. You can cast it, you control it. Um, so those are my five springtime walleye presentations. If you don't have at least three or four of these, setups tied up and ready to go this spring. I don't know what the heck you're doing, but uh, thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you want to see a video where maybe I'm not sitting down and sharing a bunch of information, but there's a bunch of fish catching action, I would say check out this one right here. This was earlier this season. It was like probably a week and a half ago. I was out with my buddy Donnie Obert. We were out on the river catching walleyes and uh, definitely a hoot. Always awesome fishing with Donnie. Check out that video next.